Hi, welcome to the eCam channel. This is John. Today I will introduce a few potentials used in electric chemistry. The ones covered in this video have more to do with thermodynamics. I will introduce over potential next time. This video is a selective summary of a recent viewpoint article, Potentially Confusing Potentials in Electric Chemistry, published in ACS Energy Letters by Professor Boshar and colleagues. It provides good clarifications for the concepts listed in this table and shows how they are related to each other. Because this video is selective, please refer to the original paper for more comprehensive information. I will post a link to the paper in the description below. This paper does a good job of connecting fundamental concepts to experimental experiences and various fields of study. The first example they used to illustrate potential concepts is voltage measurement by a voltmeter. If we put a piece of titanium and a piece of gold together and measure the voltage across the interface, what is the potential we measure? Is it electrochemical potential, chemical potential, or electric potential? To better describe the system, they introduce work function, which is the energy required to move an electron from a metal to vacuum. When one draws an energy diagram, it is the difference between the vacuum energy and the Fermi level of the material. Titanium has a smaller work function and therefore it has a higher electrochemical potential energy of electrons. Upon contact, electrons transfer from titanium to gold until the electrochemical potential of electrons in both metals is equal generating an interfacial electric field. Since the electric potential is defined as the integral of electric field over distance, this contact generates an interfacial electric potential. Yet, if we measure the voltage across the two metals using a voltmeter, we get zero volt. What the voltmeter measures is the difference in the electrochemical potential of electrons. As we showed in the previous schematic, the electrochemical potential of electrons is also the Fermi level of a material. The difference in electrochemical potential is the driving force for transport. In the previous case, it drove the transport of electrons. In some other cases, it can drive the transport of ions and other species. The flux equation summarizes the quantitative relationship between the flux of species J and the gradient in the electrochemical potential. Other terms in the equation are explained on the side. This equation governs transport by migration, diffusion, and other less common processes. Note that migration is the movement of charged species in the presence of an electric field, diffusion is movement due to a concentration gradient, and the less common processes include phenomena like transport due to spatially dependent activity coefficient. Some of you might be familiar with the diffusion equation that involves chemical potential. That is modified from this equation by ignoring electrostatic effects. You can see how this equation is modified from the definition of electrochemical potential. It is the sum of chemical potential and electrostatic energy of one species in phase alpha. With this equation, we can show that a voltmeter can measure electric potential differences between two points only when they have a common chemical potential. For example, in the case of using metal wire as a resistor, metal has a very high concentration of electrons and a large number of electronic states near the Fermi level. When current flows, the chemical potential of electrons can be regarded as invariant. The difference in electrochemical potential we measure is then equivalent to the difference in electric potential. There is a confusion of chemical potential versus electrochemical potential. In physics, the electrochemical potential is usually not explicitly defined. The electrostatic energy term is included in the chemical potential, and an intrinsic or internal chemical potential without long-range electrostatic effects is defined as a new quantity. Then, when we calculate the partial derivative of Gibbs free energy with respect to the number of moles of species J, if long-range electrostatic effects are not included, the equation yields chemical potential. And if G includes electrostatic effects, the equation results in electrochemical potential. When I learned thermodynamics, the Fermi level was defined as chemical potential of electrons. Apparently, this chemical potential includes electrostatic effects. The next example we are going to see is the interface between a metal and an inert electrolyte that contains 10 millimolar of a redox couple with both the oxidized and reduced forms present. The fundamental question here is, how does electron energy in the solution equilibrate with the Fermi level of the electrode? 
Initially, the electrochemical potential of electrons is different in the metal electrode and solution. The electrochemical reaction at the metal electrolyte interface goes as this equation. Note that the electron is residing in the metal. At equilibrium, the sum of the electrochemical potential of the products is equal to that of the reactants. It results in the equation below. Even though there are no free electrons in the solution, the electrochemical potential change associated with moving an electron into the bulk of a solution via redox reaction defines a solution Fermi level. This equation explains how a reference electrode works. For example, the platinum electrode in equilibrium with hydrogen gas and a proton will have an electrochemical potential of zero because the electrochemical potential difference between hydrogen gas and a proton is defined as zero. Upon contact, the difference in the electrochemical potential of electrons leads to a charge transfer across the interface, leading to an interfacial electric potential that affects the electrochemical potential of electrons for the metal until it is equal to the electrochemical potential of electrons for the solution. The charge transfer leaves the metal surface positive, which is compensated by the negative ionic charge in the electrolyte, forming a double layer. The concentration of the compensating ions decreases with distance from the electrode such that the electrochemical potential of all species in the system is constant with position through the double layer and into the bulk electrolyte. Additionally, we can define the electrode potential as the free energy change divided by the electron charge associated with moving an electron from a reference electrode to the working electrode and a solution potential as the free energy change divided by the electron charge associated with moving an electron from a reference electrode into the bulk of a solution via a redox reaction. I hope these explanations help you gain more appreciation for potentials in electrochemistry. Again, for more information, please refer to the original paper. We maintain this channel only on the weekends. The videos in our eCam channel are only for educational purposes and knowledge sharing. Please subscribe share and like our videos to support our channel. Thank you for watching the video today. See you next time.